Now then, I was quite hesitant to pick this up from eBay. The reason being that you'll see that quite clearly down here it says Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. And yet, very clearly equally, it, it has the top deck of the saucer section of the Enterprise getting blown to pieces. And similarly, the battle damage is consistent with that explosion. And I said to myself, I said, while Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan did involve the NCC-1701 refit getting the stuffing knocked out of it, this stuffing was only knocked out of it in Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. So why, I thought, are they labelling this as Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan? And it wasn't until I took a very close look at it that I realised for why. And that is because you have a strange mix there of Klingons and Spock and not just Khan. And that is because when you look at the back here, it says authentic USS Enterprise NCC 1701, Kirk vs Khan battle damage from Star Trek to the Wrath of Khan and Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. So what they've done rather bizarrely to my mind is they've, they've released this as a combo of all the damage that was done to the poor old Enterprise during Star Trek II and during Star Trek III, when it got blown up, self-destructed and crashed on a planet. So, decidedly odd choice to my mind anyway. And this, of course, is an art asylum Star Trek Enterprise. And by now you will probably have seen that I've had a look at the NX-01 Enterprise from Art Asylum. And this is their NCC-1701 Enterprise, which of course, I think to my mind and probably a lot of other people's minds, and indeed to the son of Picard, is one of his favouritest starships. Um, and you know, I very much grew up with this starship. So what I wanted to do in getting this, because it was relatively affordable compared to many of them on eBay at the moment, um, I thought I'm gonna get it because it'll show me what it looks like and kind of what it does as you know the standard sort of look of the Enterprise, which will then give me a sort of a yes or a no to whether or not I want one that hasn't got the battle damage. So that was my kind of thinking in, in picking this one up. So, um, undoubtedly being unboxed, um, I believe that they, that they come with the nacelles removed. So let's just have a little, a little unboxing, um, because as I say, I'm pretty confident it's been unboxed before. I'll just show you briefly the size. This that we've seen, well, I've seen before. Um, this the NX01 had as a as a feature. Um, this little sort of uh, little sort of token uh, as a you know, sort of a, a reference point for it, and its ear and so on. Lots of images from the actual movie itself, um, ad adverts for their the various sort of um, figures that um, our son were doing at the same time. So wave one and wave two there, and the phaser from the looks of it, and the Enterprise A, which presumably is gonna be exactly the same as this one with the letter A, <laughs> and possibly less battle damage. Um, so, we should have ship system audio and lighting effects as well. So we've got warp, enemy attack, impulse engines, phaser attack, all sorts of good stuff like that, and various credits there for people who have who have worked on the model for, uh, from the looks of it as well, which is not, which is a nice touch. Um, not something you you particularly have to do, but I, I would imagine that was sort of culturally what Artist Island did. So it's definitely open on this side. So I'll go in from from this side. Let's have a look at what I've actually ended up with. Nice, um, nice image from the film there as well. And this is what was confusing the heck out of me, because the, the front doesn't mention Star Trek 3 at all. So I just couldn't figure out what was supposed to be going on with it. Alright, so as I thought, so the pylons are... The pylons are, are attached, but the actual nacelles themselves are not. So let me have a look. That's exactly what I've got and how it all attaches. I, I nearly went for one of these, it was a clean version of it. Um, but 
I had a slight question mark over its condition, so I didn't commit. And then of course it disappeared. <laughs> Which is what happens when you don't commit on eBay, things vanish. Now that is well and truly stuck into its to the back there. So you can see it's kind of, it's, it's literally the nacelle pylons only. So I'm just wondering how best to extract it. Um, I think that's it. Deflected is free and clear, so if I just wriggle this out now, with a little bit of luck, I can free and clear a space dock. Right, there we go. Cool. So it's very, very battle damaged. I mean, they've, they've, gone to, they've properly gone to work on the old uh, carbon scoring there. Nice deflector dish. They've even, that's the yeah, that's the tension to, I actually remember there being one photon torpedo missing and one you know one tube taken out because if you if you remember with it, the annoying detail that I do Star Trek 2 you remember that the, the um, Reliant absolutely paced them with phaser fire down here and up there and, and in doing so it obviously takes out one of the two tor front torpedo tubes and odd detail as well the Enterprise NCC 1701 doesn't have an aft torpedo tube I have no idea why that is. It seems like an oversight to me, but anyway, um, I think that's accurate. Do shout at me in the comments if it isn't, but I believe that is the case. Now then, what else do we have in the box? I'm only saying it's been out simply so my simple virtue of the fact that the wires that hold stuff in place are still in there, but they obviously weren't holding that. So I need two triple A's which look like they go underneath, which looks like I need a screwdriver, much like the NX-01 did. So I will probably have to find that unless, no, no batteries or, isn't, or they run out. So I will deal with that in a moment. I can find my NX and swap them in. So we can see the, got a decent stand there and we can put the cells on. Okay, so let's see, see if I can get the nacelles. Now that's interesting, the nacelles have actually got pins. That, ah, oh, of course they would have, wouldn't they? Because they're gonna be, they're gonna light up. So they're obviously rigged so that they will pass current into them. That's very clever. I do, I do have a hankering after the um, Art Asylum slash Diamond Select models because they are very, very nicely done. Um, but that being said, right now, they are also horribly expensive. <laughs> um, compared to what you can pick up the Playmates versions for, um, you know, these are really, really deeply, deeply expensive to get, unless you get lucky, as I have tended to, and you find one where someone's starting it on an auction basis. Now, on an auction basis, they don't tend to go for quite so much as the Buy It Nows which is a, a, you know, a decided plus um, if, you, if you're really sort of desperate for one. Now, I think I've got that wrong. I think that should be um, on this side because I reckon that the, the blue will go on the outside and just because it doesn't need to be lit as much on the inside, if I were to, if I were to guess. So I'm just wondering if it's just... Because it doesn't actually... Yeah, it just... The, the instructions are just sort of saying... I can't see that. Can um, the instructions are just saying sort of plop it straight, straight on the um, onto the pylons. So I'm assuming that's what that's exactly what I do. So it should just go straight down onto them. But it doesn't really seem to want to to play ball on that basis. Hmm. I think what I'll do is I'll just fiddle with this, this, this off camera for a moment and I'll come back to you when I've managed it. All right, I can confirm that this is pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool, yeah, definitely pretty cool. <laughs> um, it did take a little bit of bravery in order to just snap things down, it has to be said. Um, but there we are. So even the nacelles have taken some some punishment there. Um, I can't quite remember if that's sort of accurate. 
but again this is a sort of a mashup of of different damages so you know you kind of take your pick i suppose as to which is wrath of khan which is which is uh, star trek 3. um um, really nice stands as well. The stands, I think, are, 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 are a decent um, you know, sort of Starfleet emblem there in the middle of it. And um, we've got the yeah, these are definitely very sort of um, NX01 type. With this sort of see-through, oops, see-through plastic, and very hard not to break anything when I get it out of the box. So that would be a bad thing. Okay. So I think if you've seen my NX01 video, that, that will be immediately familiar, I think, as, as a concept. I said the NX01s was kind of blue. So that looks like it should fit in quite happily and just, um, you know, form up to uh, to go into the bottom. And they'll, I've got a spare base plate. Um, it's a funny sort of approach. That they, well, I think it's funny. I suppose the, the difference is between wanting to whoosh it around and and not. Um, so what I have here is I've got this spare base plate here, um, which would swap in there, and then you'd have the ability then to to um, attach these the stand element to it there. So this is good for whooshing around the place if you're so inclined because obviously that gives it a better realistic look of the enterprise um i like the fact they've got they've got the um the lettering there i mean these things are so accurate i mean, I, I mean if any of you are more committed uh trekkers trekkies trek people than me do let me know what you what you think of this in terms of sort of overall accuracy um i'm guessing it's pretty pretty on it um but I guess with, as with any sort of model slash toy, there may be certain liberties that's, liberties that have been taken. I don't know. Um, so I think the last thing to do here, really, I'd love to know where this screw came from because it seems to be spare because the battery cover's still got a screw. So I'm not quite sure where that one came from unless it came out of the Enterprise and I haven't cleaned it up. I don't remember it being there before. And I've got a very, very small... O ring of some description there. So again, not quite sure what they're for, unless they're for this. Maybe it's got its own screw, just just because it can have its own screw. So I will leave you again, just to try and sort out its light and sound. Hopefully. Well, I finally found some AA, well triple A's rather, but um, it actually requires three of them. So two seconds. All right, that took a bit of doing. <laughs> I'm finally there. Let's have a look. I've turned the main lights off. That's cool. Sounds like warp. Deflector dish is lighting up as well. That was transporter, I think. Laser. Torpedoes, I would suggest. Not sure about that one. So their cells are definitely lighting up as well. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And arguably, that's, that sounded better than the, um, the NX-01 did. And as it's here, because I just pinched all of its batteries, why don't we do a quick size comparison? So here's the, the NX-01. And here's the Enterprise. And the Enterprise is considerably bigger. Um, that's sort of front of saucer section to to know cells that you can see it's way, way bigger. Um, the actual source of sections are not radically different. Um, then they're, they're fairly comparable. The, the, the Enterprises is, is slightly larger diameter by a smidgen. Um, but as you can see, the, 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 the nacelles are absolutely huge on the, uh, 
uh, the 1701 as compared to the NX, which I guess is what you expect. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different iteration, but, but you can see how well they did with the NX and the sort of the design lineage idea that, you know, that the NX was a sort of more primitive version of this one. It's very cleverly done. So, is it worth the the cash? Would I like to have a an undamaged version? Well, um, yes. <laughs> it's the it's the short answer. Um, I mean, I don't really know what I, I I must say. I haven't really looked into the actual history of how Diamond Select came to have these as as a license, you know. Um, but however they managed it, they, they clearly played a bit of a blinder because they did such a great job with them. I mean, it's such a high quality and big model. And is it is it a toy? Is it a model? Well, the display stand says model, you know, to my mind. But the light up features and everything else say toy. So, you know, it's, it kind of lands squarely in the middle of the two, I would suggest. But I have to say, I mean, I, I struggled to get the first AAA battery into the power pack area. Um, that was that required a degree of bravery and a degree, a degree of brute force strength. But the model itself held up very well against that. So, you know, in terms of actual strength, it's, it's really impressive. And I can't leave this review without doing one more thing. Um, so let me just bring in a sort of a left field comparator. This is the Eagle Moss XL Reliant, which of course is not intended to sort of just sit there, it's intended to be on a stand. But you can see that the scale wise, I mean, it's, maybe it's hard to see actually. Let me, let me do this. That's probably a better comparison. Um, it's, Maybe I don't know. I mean, it's it's a half, it's probably half the size overall. I mean, you know, those nacelles in theory are the same era of nacelles, of course. But you can see it's it's about half the size overall of this model scale wise. Um, so that if you're familiar with your Eagle Moss, that should give you an idea of the sheer size of the Diamond Select version. Um, and of course, you know that is sort of Star Trek II relevant uh, because this is the ship that went up against. The Enterprise, but they would have been pretty much comparable sizes in that film, of course. You know, this is these these two are not the same scale in any way, shape, or form. Um, I just thought I'd bring it out for comparison purposes. I mean, you know, you look at the sort of the Eagle Moss colouring and everything else, and arguably there's a lot more detail on the Eagle Moss, actually. Um, just little details are probably more apparent on the Eagle Moss version. Actually, I mean, funnily enough, I'm looking at it and you can barely make out the USS Reliant. It is on there. Um, it's just it's just here, but you can barely read it. And that might be a, a quirk of the one that I've got. I don't know, but that seems a little bit off to me. Um, but anyway, it's not about this. It's about the Enterprise. <laughs> and just such a, I mean, for me personally, it was such an iconic film as well, because I think it was a, the first time we'd ever really seen three-dimensional space combat that I could remember because what you have is this the, that sort of epic shot in the, in the nebula Mutara nebula at the end where the reliance like this and the enterprise just sort of hovers up from from behind it like that but it actually sort of comes up vertically um, and that was really really unusual in even in the Star Trek films to that point they hadn't really done that and we don't really see it again until all good things <laughs> in some respects I think so, you know, it's, it's, it's a great model and I would, for display purposes, I would love the, the, the untarnished version of it. Unfortunately, they are potentially several hundred pounds, um, you know, which is, I think is over the top for a plastic model. But then I don't know the Playmates, I don't know, I mean, the Playmates aren't bad though. In fairness to the Playmates, I don't think I've ever seen a Playmates 1701. So I'd be quite interested in it to see one of those because I bet they're pretty decent as well. But just from a sheer size point of view, the Eagle Moss models are not going to get close to that. So, you know, you pay your money and it takes your choice as ever, as with anything else in life. So hope you've enjoyed that one. Um, I don't have 
any more diamond selects at the moment because I'll need to save the pennies to, to try and find some more. Although actually, thinking about it, that is a slight fib. I do have another one. <laughs> um, I just haven't, I haven't got it out of its parcel yet. But it's, unfortunately, it's exactly the same as one you've already seen, but without the battle damage. Um, so I will get around to that one as well. Um, and you know that'll be quite brief because it'll be either be yes it's exactly the same or it's not. Um, so on that note I will leave it there. Do like and subscribe as ever please. Um, it does help the channel a lot if you can do and um, I'll catch you for the next one. Cheers for now.